Welcome to this short webinar where we're going to have a look at how to budget for your marketing in 27. We are going to zoom in onto the best practices for online marketing. Okay, for those of you that are interested in where I got my data and my stats from and also my trends, I've used the latest e-consultancy and forestry research. I've also had a look at the CMO surveys for 2016 and those that have been, that have been done for predictions for 2017 and also at eMarket.com. And then I've also had a look at, you know, what's happening with our own clients, you know, what was their spending in 2016 and what they're telling us they are, where they are going to spend their money in 2017. Okay, the first thing is, you know, let's just get this clear in our heads is what is a good return on investment for your digital marketing and for your marketing in general? And the rule of thumb is that you, you need a five to one ratio, revenue versus your variable costs. Um, anything less than that happens and it happens a lot of, a lot of the time. Uh, but we're always striving to work towards this five to one revenue versus variable cost. Um, in some instances and with some of the, the, the different tactics and the different channels, uh, like e-marketing for example, you know with email marketing we can easily get a 40 to 1 ratio, but that's an exception. Uh, as a rule of thumb, we're always working at on, on a 5 to 1 and just keep this in the, in the back of your mind uh, when you start running campaigns and when you start looking at your different ad spends and where you're spending your money and just think, you know, am I getting close or even better than this 5 to 1 ratio. So let's have a look at our total marketing budget. In other words, offline your traditional budget, including your digital spend. And that should be in a region of 7 to 12 percent of your total revenue, your total turnover. Now there are four variables that will actually impact if you're at the low end or at your top end. First one of these is whether you are a business to business or a business to consumer business. And even in this, you know, you can be a business to business focusing on products or you can be on, on a service business. Now what we, you, you will find is if you're a business to business, you will tend to be more towards the lower end, more towards the 7%. Whereas if you're going to market to consumers, you will spend more in a region of the 12% on your total, of your total revenue on marketing as a whole. The next variable is actually your size or your revenue. And we find that smaller businesses spend a lot more on marketing than larger big businesses. And that's basically the old story. You know, if you're a small fish in a big pond, you have to work very hard to, to, to get noticed and to get your products and get your name out there. The third variable is whether you are creating a portion of your revenue via e-commerce. In other words, you are selling something directly from your website. Um, and don't shake your head or roll your eyes. A lot of bricks and mortar businesses are having a portion and you know, opening a small little online shop, e-commerce shop, uh, whether it's a Shopify shop or an Equit shop or a WooCommerce, it doesn't matter. But they are selling a handful of products online. And the moment you start doing this, it means you will have to invest more in infrastructure, you'll have to invest more in skills. And that means that you will tend to go slightly more towards the 12% again, as opposed to the 7%. And then the last one is your level of sophistication. And this is a very important one. Uh, when you're starting out, a lot of people make the mistake to spend too much, you know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's that next shiny thing syndrome. Uh, but as a rule of thumb, again, the more sophisticated you are in terms of e-commerce, email marketing, etc., the more you will spend. And the reason for that is, is that once you get your certification levels are up, you will know how to go over that five to one ratio. And then it makes sense to spend more on your marketing because you generate more revenue through your marketing. So let's look at digital spend as a proportion of the overall budget. And the trend that we're seeing, the sort of the sweet spot, is that businesses are spending between 20 and 35% of the total marketing budget on digital. Uh, and again, this differs from business to business. Uh, I find that in the green industry, there are lots of businesses that have done completely away with traditional print advertising and are using that money rather than spending that on, on, on digital or online advertising. Um, I have clients that have gone 100% digital. I don't advise that. I don't think it's a good idea. I think balance is still critical and balance is still key in terms of your, how you spend your marketing budget. So again, sweet spot between 20 and 35%. Now for 2017, you will see that most people are going to allocate their digital budgets across five 
buckets. And the first one of that is skills and skills development and buying skills. And on the smaller side, if you're a smaller business, what we find is that a lot of the smaller businesses have started outsourcing this. Uh, they'd rather get a management company or a user freelance or whatever because the skills are so expensive. And in terms of digital marketing, you have to keep updating those skills. Uh, you know, it's it's evolving so rapidly that you can't sit still. Uh, you know, half-life of, of digital marketing knowledge is between three and six months. So uh, that's why a lot of people, the skills bucket will actually be an outsource bucket. In terms of those that want to keep it in-house and, you know, if you've got an interest in that, we find that a lot of people are spending a lot more on training and on consultants, get that necessary skills within the business. Now the next bucket is no-brainer, it's technology. You need a website. Uh, a lot of us are not calling it a website anymore. Uh, we call it a marketing platform because essentially that's what it is. You also need email uh, service provider, that's online software, and all of this is cloud-based. All your technology these days is cloud-based. The same goes for your CRMs, uh, things like Insightly, Numble, Salesforce, whatever, whichever one you're using. Uh, those are all cloud-based software and that's the technology. Uh, a no-brainer budget you have to spend this to, to market online. The third bucket is online currency and that's content and search engine optimization. Most of your visitors and over the long term you will get through organic search. So you have to invest in this. Uh, and you can see it's quite a sizable portion. It's about one third, it's 18% of that total online marketing budget is going towards creating content and optimizing it, making sure that the search engines can find it and present it to your target market. A fourth bucket that deserves a bucket on its own, even if it's only 5%, is email. Email is still the highest return on investment I've mentioned earlier. Uh, if you're doing this correctly, you know, there are people are getting 20 to 1 to 40 to 1 return on investment. So it definitely deserves a bucket on, it, on its own. And even if it's only 5%, you will see this is probably the most profitable 5% uh, of your budget that you're going to spend in 2017. And then online ads, 37%, and that's this is the equivalent of print advertising. And basically here yeah, we've got three different buckets. You know, the first one is your search ads. Those are the little ads that appear on, on when somebody search in Google, the sponsored ad with a little green doiky uh, next to them. Then also we have display ads, and this is ads that you will put onto another website, and you can do it also through the AdWords platform, or you can buy ads from, you know, uh, magazines or media websites in your in your in, in our industry and then the last one here is actually what we call the news feed ads or the or the social media ads and that's just the ads that we place on facebook uh, pinterest instagram twitter all of those and those are your five main buckets with sort of the percentages that you need to be looking at in 27. Now you might ask where social in this, there's not a bucket for social media <laughs> and yes there's not. Uh, the reason for that is that social is sort of going out of favor with a lot of people in terms of how they're allocating their budgets and also because you know if it's a smaller business like we've said the first bucket was the skills bucket they will just simply outsource social uh, get a social media manager to do it on their behalf and then it will come out of that bucket it's also part of the third bucket you know your seo and your content because social media basically it's content you have to generate content so it will also fit in there and then lastly it's also part of the fifth bucket uh, where it's online advertising a lot of people a lot of small businesses are actually only putting up a facebook page for the simple reason that they want to get to a hundred or more fans so that they can start using the Facebook advertising platform. Let's look at two trends and uh, you know I, I call these, these definitely are trends, but I also want to call them the two dirty little secrets of uh, advertising or online marketing in 27. And the first one is Facebook. You know the, the targeting options in Facebook is absolutely insane. You can literally target if you've got a picture of who your ideal audience is, you can target them in Facebook, whether they are, you know, the owners of businesses, whether they are gardeners, whether they are, you know, elderly gardeners or out, you know, with, with dogs and cats, you can you mention it, it's there. Um, and, and why this is going to be a trend in the dirty secret in 2017 is that uh, most small businesses are not really taking advantage of, of the Facebook advertising platform in a correct way. Uh, and what we're going to see, I think, towards the end of 2017, you know, middle 2018, is that this is going to get saturated. 
Uh, so it's a question of you have to get there in quite early now because we are still paying, you know, when we do ungated, you know, promotions of ungated content. We're paying in South African rands, you know, 28, 18 cents uh, a, a click to, to a website, uh, which is ridiculously cheap. You can't do that on AdWords. And the next one is video, you know, video is a channel. It's not there as a, as a bucket at the moment, and you know most of us are actually taking video and doing it with our, our content budget, the third bucket. But I'm absolutely 100% convinced that more and more small businesses are going to actually create a little budget specifically just for video. It's powerful, and I'm not talking just about your 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 uh, uh, YouTube video channel. I'm also talking about Facebook because Facebook Live and with Facebook Video, uh, Facebook is really one of the most popular video channels n next to YouTube. So those are the two trends that I think you should keep watching and that and also the two dirty little secrets that I think you should invest in in, in 2017. I hope this helped you and I hope this give, gave you an idea of where you are going and how you can divide your bu budget up in 27. But if you need help with this, I've got a little private calculator that I use, a little spreadsheet that I've made that can actually, and I've, when we've input all this research from Forrester and e-consultants, everybody into that and they ran a few macros. So I can help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, free if Mahalo doesn't cost you a cent. Just to give you an idea personally for your business, how you should be dividing your budget between traditional and digital marketing, online marketing, and also your online marketing, how much you should be spending on each of those buckets specifically for your business. So yeah, if you need the help of this, please don't hesitate. Give me a call. There's my telephone number.